Hey guys, welcome back to the Popper Metagame. I'm your host, MSP, uh, breaking it down for you. Today we're going to talk about blue-black control. Now something interesting has been going on in the Popper Metagame. Blue-black control has risen to number three in the metagame. And some of you might be wondering, how is this possible? Just like you might be wondering how pulling a foil out of a brand new pack can already be warped and capable of getting you banned from a tournament. I can't answer that question for you, but what I can answer is what's going on with Blue Black Control. So let's break it down. Blue Black Control has two problematic matchups that are really important, and that is Tron and Burn. The reason for this is that blue-black control decks actually tend to be more mid-rangey decks rather than actual hard control decks. And even the hard control decks, either way, always get out outranged by Tron because Tron is able to just get more mana. If you ever watch control versus control matchups, the, the deck that misses its land drops is more likely to lose the matchup. Having more mana in a control versus control matchup is huge, or mid-range versus mid-range, whatever. Basically, whenever it's not about racing the opponent, it's about who can go big, who can go over the top. And Tron does that better than blue-black control. However, the metagame has gotten real fast, real fast. There's a lot of aggression, uh, mono-white heroic, inside-out combo, boggles, affinity, stompy, elves, mono blue delver is it delver there's a lot of really aggressive reasonably fast decks out there and this makes it difficult for tron tron's able to kind of sort of fight through some of these matchups but if it misses a beat if it misses hitting its tron fast enough it's going to lose so this makes it a little bit difficult for tron now granted tron's still doing reasonably well because it's a very powerful deck and it's also able because it can tap into all five colors it's able to do a little metagaming itself and it's able to pull a chameleon colossus and change what it's doing by accessing all the different colors although it is typically blue plus whatever a lot of times green or red being the second primary color anyway blue black Control's second deck that it has to worry about is burn now what's going on right now is that Tron is experiencing more pressure than normal and even though you might have checked in the past and you might have looked at the metagame situation and said well actually you know Tron is, is about six percent of the metagame now and it's been that in the past this is a little bit misleading because historically when you try to figure out what's going on with Tron there would be different Tron decks that would show up at different places in the metagame ranking and usually there'd be a couple of different Tron lists that would show up in the four to seven percent range and if you consolidated it it wasn't uncommon for Tron to actually have more than 10% of the metagame a fair bit of the time. So right now, when you actually when you actually break down and look at the top 12 lists, you'll actually notice that there's just a singular Tron list in the top 12, one list with more than 2%. So Tron, with only around 6% of the metagame, it's doing well. It's a really good deck, but it's it's not as prevalent as it has been at certain times in the past. This opens up a window of opportunity for Blue Black Control. Also, Burn is particularly just bad. I've, I talked about this a little bit last time when I talked about Burn. So you might want to go back and find the Burn video on the channel if you want to hear more about Burn. But the short version is Burn has problems right now. It's not well positioned, in my opinion, with what it's running up against. I think, for example, if you're going to pick a Popper deck to take into a weekend challenge, yeah, you might get lucky in top eight. But overall, I just think if you take Burn into a weekend challenge or even just hop into a league, it's a real uphill battle, and I don't recommend it. Uh, right now, Burn is sitting here at a little over 3% of the metagame. So with both of Blue Black's Primary problematic matchups, by the way, in addition to Burn, I should also mention really something really aggressive uh, like Mono Red Aggro that has both really aggressive elements with Burn as finisher. These are, these are problematic for Blue-Black Control as well. Now, since Burn and Tron are both at a minimum, Blue-Black Control is quite good against a lot of other things. So let's Blue-Black Control has access to things like Pestilence, Crypt Rats, uh, let's see, uh, there's also uh, a couple of other sweepers out there. This list doesn't seem to have access to uh, any of the, ex let's see what we can find here. Uh, okay, here we go. So at least 
we've got echoing decay, but yeah, not, I'm not seeing not seeing any of the really any anything really particularly interesting here as far as uh Okay, here we go. Evan Carr's Justice. So we've got that's another great example. Here's a two damage to all creature sweeper. You know, again in addition to crypt rats. And then there's also things like okay, so here we go. Shrivel, also another great example. There's nausea. There's just there's just a lot of access in black pestilence. There's a lot of different ways to blow up the board. In addition, we have a lot of access to things like Chainer's Edict, Diabolic Edict, um, uh, various sacrificial effects. There's also sign in blood there's also oh, there's that black colorless two costed instant where your opponent sacrifices a creature or even you sacrifice creature and then the game it's okay so it's target player sacrifice a creature and then they gain life equal to i think the creature's power or toughness uh, so there's that there's also uh, there's there's a there's a couple of oh, geth's verdict is another one it's just a ton of sacrifice effects that black has access to so you can mix and match these accordingly. Echoing Decay is good again with killing tokens. Doom Blade is just a universal solution. So when you add, and then of course access things like Counterspell, but Counterspell is not really what we care about uh, for this, this analysis. What matters is with all these access to sweepers, taking care of Elves, Stompy, Mono White Heroic, Boggles, this is quite good. And then having a lot of access to sacrifice effects in addition to those sweepers is once again really nice for things like Boggles and Mono White Heroic and even Stompy where they're, you know, primarily Mono White Heroic and Boggles have access to things that make their creatures protection for black or untargetable or hexproof or whatever. Even Stompy's able to run uh, Vines of Astwood to temporarily give hexproof, but none of this really matters if your opponent... Uh, slams a pestilence or does two damage to everything or can just consistently keep slamming board wipes and sack effects what it means is boggles and mono white heroic are not going to have great matchups against blue black control when we talk about stompy it really depends on the specific configuration of the decks stompy is just one of those decks that has a reasonable chance to, to have game against almost anything even if it's not a great game uh, so there's not a ton of matchups where Stompy is just, you know, this overwhelming monstrous favorite where it's always going to win. Uh, there's also not a ton of matchups where it's just so far behind it has no chance to win. There are certain matchups uh, that are more difficult, and blue-black control can be somewhat of a difficult matchup if the blue-black control deck has less counter spells and more cheap removal and some uh, efficient creatures. So, anyway. Uh, also, Mono Blue Delver... Blue and blue-red Delver can also be similarly beat up by blue-black control. These are decks that don't have pack a lot in the way of finishers. Is it Delver typically has a, a singular play set of Bolt, so blue-black control can stabilize and come back. Uh, and again, having access to a lot of different removal, uh, cheap removal, and just counter spells as well to push back, and typically being able to access more mana than these decks, since Is it Delver and Mono Blue Delver tend to run a little bit light on the mana. Uh, blue black control is usually able to battle its way back in, or at least have a reasonable matchup. Koldotha Boros, again, blue black control, a lot of times is, is able to do what Koldotha Boros is doing, but do it a little bit better. Koldotha Boros, you know, just wants to outgrind the opponent a lot of times. Now, again, when I talk about Koldotha Boros, it's worth pointing out, I don't actually mean real Koldotha Boros, I mean the Palace Sentinels Boros deck that's just trying to get the Monarch token out and then use that to lever drawing an extra card every turn to grind the opponent out. The problem is that these blue-black control decks are able to stick some efficient creatures like a Gurmag Angler and then have Counterspell backup magic to keep jamming through until they can steal the Monarch token. Or alternatively, sometimes these blue-black controllists will uh, also have a Thorn of the Black Rose in the main or the sideboard or something like that. Or these decks usually can, it's a little bit ridiculous, but usually these blue-black lists can draw a lot of cards and actually compete against uh, a Monarch token because, yeah, drawing two or three cards a turn is cool, but a lot of times these blue-black lists can af gain effective two-for-ones over and over and over uh, and survive long enough and get ahead and eventually steal the, to the Monarch token. So... These grindy matchups, Koldotha Boros can definitely win, but Blue Black Control has a lot more game in these matchups than a lot of people might realize. So, I would say against everything that's at the top of the list, Affinity can also be highly problematic, uh, but this can be balanced out by having enough copies of Hydro Blast in the sideboard. Hydro Blast is really important when we start talking about Blue Black Control versus Affinity for this reason. Even though Affinity is a multicolor artifact deck, 
The cards that Blue Black Control is most afraid of are Atog and Fling and Team Rear Battle Rage and Galvanic Blast. Being able to neutralize all of these cards with a Hydro Blast is very important. Also, if an Atog goes all in, attacks, and they sack a lot of their artifacts and they throw a fling out there, being able to just win the game off of a Hydro Blast is really important. So if a blue-black control deck only has one or you know maybe a singular copy of Hydro Blast in the sideboard, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. But if the blue-black controllist has a, the full grip, uh, ideally four or at least three Hydro Blasts, they're going to have a chance of dispels. Getting that right mix of cheap, efficient counterspell slash removal cards is imperative. I actually don't like the card counterspell for blue-black in the matchup. It's just too slow and clunky and doesn't help you when you get behind. The other thing that blue-black needs to do is have enough removal to be able to catch up a little bit if the affinity deck is able to get some 4-4 four, four, Carapace Forgers and Mirror Enforcers on board early. Uh, counter, counter magic is just not good if you're already behind. Holding up mana to counterspell things while your opponent's already killing you is, is highly problematic. So then you have to tap out to kill things. Can't hold up your counterspells and now your opponent can reload the board with more creatures again. So getting behind holding counterspells is just a problem. So, But a lot of these configurations of blue-black control lists or blue-black mid-range lists, I don't know if the lists are... I, don't run heavy on the counter spells. So this list right here with main deck disfigures, or I'm sorry, main deck dispels, four counter spells, two dispels, a soul manipulation. This is a deck that's running seven counter spells, and I think that's probably about as heavy of a counter spell main deck inclusion as you're likely to see. Looks like looks like this. Uh, here, let's just click on another random list. So here's here's a deck that's running. Let's see, we've got four counter spells and a prohibit. So we're looking at five main deck counter spells. Let's just grab another random list here. Here we've got four counter spells. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Although it's, it's important to note that this particular blue black iteration is running Exume and Striped River Winder. So it's, it's attacking along a slightly different axis. Uh, but. It doesn't really matter what kind of configuration of blue-black, even though the lists are often trying to do something very different. Uh, you don't want to have too many counterspells. So here's a 6-0 list that really just has the four main deck counterspells and has cheap, a lot of cheap cards supporting it. Disfigure for a single black, Dispel for a single blue. Okay, so we do have the two, so I guess we have six counterspells here, but uh, but again, it's using uh, Dispels as the other counterspells, Singular Mana, Ponder, We've got Doomblade. Uh, the Probe is a little bit more on the expensive end. Recoil is an interesting inclusion. So Recoil and then Denrovahor kind of performing the same functionality. And let's see if we can find... Okay, so here's a 6-1 list. And this particular list is running 4 counter spell. And okay, so that that's basically it as far as main deck counter spells go. And again, it's, you know, one mana disfigure, one mana preordain, one mana tragic slip, two mana chainer's edict, two mana doom blade. So you get you get the idea that we're we're going really cheap on the curve. Gurmag Angler is a really efficient threat because you can often cast it for one mana. So what this does is it allows the blue black deck to interact with some of these really aggressive decks that are playing really cheap efficient creatures by also having cheap efficient cards to respond with and if you get a Gurmag Angler out and you can back that up with removal and counter spells you're going to be able to take over the game because if your opponent has a couple of two twos out they can't get a good attack into a Gurmag Angler without using some kind of trick and if you're able to respond with a counter spell or a removal to get another two for one it can end up in a blowout pretty quickly so even some versions that don't run Gurmag Angler are still able to just utilize a lot of cheap, efficient removal, and then have a few counter spells in the mix to allow them to go over the top. And then again, having these these board sweepers is just really important. This deck has an Evan Karch Justice in the main, one in the sideboard. I do think Blue Black Control is reasonably positioned right now, but uh, you know, it's this is not a list that's going to just blow out every you know. Uh, even even the matches where it's favored, it's going to lose a fair amount of the time because, as the old saying goes, there may not be any, there may not be any such thing as having the wrong 
threats but there are incorrect answers so there are just going to be some situations where if blue black control floods out uh, or gets or goes mana short against a really aggressive deck it's just going to lose because aggressive decks can get free wins a lot more than control decks can or if you happen to draw the wrong things at the wrong time you're going to lose a lot of these aggressive decks can still just get in there but blue black control if you get reasonable draws you're going to have a good game and what's really interesting about blue black control right now if you are running a a critical number of sacrifice effects in particular these are particularly good against mono white heroic and boggles which actually give you a little bit of free wins that control you don't normally think of control as getting free wins but you know there's going to be certain draws from boggles and mono white heroics that are not uncommon where they're creature light and they have a lot of other things going on so they load up a creature and then the mono black controllist just throws an edict effect out there and that's basically the game so, of course, the upside to playing something like Mono White Heroic or Boggles is you can run into certain matchups where your opponent has no interaction and you just steal the game. But the downside to the way these, ma these decks play out is it's not wholly uncommon for them to have land and a creature or two and a lot of effects, but they can really get blown out by losing uh, their creatures. So that's one of the nice things about Blue-Black Control right now, but you can, none of these other matchups you can really take for granted. Uh, Kodothoboros is winnable, but uh, it's not... It's not a slam dunk matchup. Same thing for Is It Blitz and Mono Blue Delver. I definitely like playing Blue Black Control uh, in either of these matchups, but Is It Delver and, Blue, and Mono Blue Delver are just very good decks that can always come back. And I would rather be playing Tron than Blue Black Control in that type of a matchup situation. I would rather be playing Burn than Blue Black Control when they face off. Uh, and again, Elves, Stompy, these are decks that you can beat with Blue Black Control, but if your draws, if your removal doesn't line up correctly, if your draws don't line up correctly, you draw too many counter spells early, and you can easily lose. So it's just a, it's just one of those things right now where Blue Black Control is efficiently positioned. But one of the really nice things about the Popper format in particular is it's it's not it's not as much like other formats where certain decks can only be answered by one or two other decks. It's it's not that kind of a thing. It's it's more a matter of certain decks having edges against other decks. And yes, there are some silver bullet situations where one deck just has a, a real Achilles heel in a matchup that it, it's just almost never going to win because it's that bad. But you don't see as much of this in Popper as you might see in other formats where there's just some unwinnable matchups. Popper is more a format about edges, and that's what makes it a fabulous a uh, really fabulous uh, format. But that doesn't mean that the format doesn't respond to those edges. You might not think that's impactful enough, but it's huge but it, you know, when you look at the statistical aggregations of these little edges, they're 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 going to shift things around. Right now, blue black control and Tron and Koldotha Boros, these are these are go these three decks being towards the upper end of the meta. Koldotha Boros, Blue Black Control, and Five Color Tron. These mid-rangey control decks rising to the top. This is this is not <laughs> this is not something that's going to happen without another reaction. This meta game will continue to evolve because it's just it's just the way it is. Uh, it's a responsive meta game, but you can't just say, well, if Koldotha Boros is at the top of the meta game, I'm going to pick up this certain deck that's going to blow it out every time. It's the type of deck, the same thing for Is It Delver, that you, you can't just blow it out every single time. However, when you look at something like Blue Black Control, this is this is definitely a deck that you can that you can feed on with the right type of uh, aggressive strategy. For for example, I actually think that the aggressive red decks are reasonably positioned right now against Blue Black Control and against Tron decks. Not so much against uh, Mono Blue Delver or necessarily Is It Delver, although depending on how you build the lists, uh, you, you might be able to get something done there. Uh, for example, let's just let's just scroll way down in the metagame right now. Normally, I, I wouldn't recommend. Let's see here. Let's take a look. Here's a here's a red deck. So this is the typical configuration of red deck. This isn't really what I'm looking for. I think that we can actually... MTG Goldfish has reworked things a little bit so that you can actually find more of these deck archetypes easily. So yeah, here we go. This is actually good old-fashioned Goblins. So Sparksmith is a is a card that's it's really interesting. Also, Goblins is able to take advantage of Death Spark reasonably well. 
You can also slam electricery in the sideboard with, with Pyroblast. You got Gorilla Shaman, Smash Smithereens. So what this deck is actually able to do is to take advantage of Smash to Smithereens and Gorilla Shaman in the sideboard to be able to really beat up on Affinity. On the other hand, when it comes to these mono blue Delver and blue red Delver decks, they they really turn on one and two toughness creatures quite a bit. Now mono blue Delver does also have Spire Golem, of course, that's there. But Smash to Smithereens is pretty nice against Spire Golem, although it is situational, admittedly. But the rest of the rest of those deck lists, there's a lot of one toughness creatures. So Death Spark, the reason it gets a lot of, uh, which by the way, it's just a, it's an instant for one red, deal one damage to target creature or player. But at the beginning of your upkeep, if Death Spark is in your graveyard with a creature card directly above it, you can pay one. If you do, return Death Spark to your hand. Now, what's what's interesting about this? particular card is when you look at the configuration of the goblins deck versus your typical straight red deck it's got the inclusion of mog raider uh, to sacrifice goblins on demand and it's also got goblin slutter to sacrifice goblins on demand so you can have a situation where ev you can time it just right and always be cycling death spark or even if you're if you play death spark and your opponent counterspells it you're like, okay, so you run out a goblin cohort and they counterspell it. Well, now you're going to get your death spark back and you can, you know, aim it back at a fairy on board again. Then if they counterspell it, you know, I mean, they, these decks don't have infinite counterspells and removal, but if you just time it right, you can cycle death spark over and over and over. And this can be a very problematic card for decks that are revolving on one toughness creatures. And there's a fair bit of that out there. Also, Sparksmith is really good. I mean, this this card could be a blowout. If this resolves against a mono blue deck, this could just win you the game right there. Uh, also good against blue red. It's good against fairies. It's good against all kinds of stuff. Now, you have to be careful when you get this out there not to overload your board with too many goblins. Sparksmith, by the way, is a red and colorless 1-1 one -one that says it deals X damage to target creature and X damage to you where X is the number of goblins in play. Yeah, dealing damage to yourself can be a little bit rough, but if you can use Sparksmith in a match to kill off four separate creatures in that particular match over the course of the game that is huge that is a four for zero trade <laughs> you know people like two for ones four for zero because you know you kill four other creatures and the sparksmith the sparksmith is still on board <laughs> so it's still there you haven't even lost it uh, so it's, it's a huge amount of it, advantage you can gain and while you're blowing up their creatures this should open up avenues of attack for your creatures to out tempo your opponent so this is this is really quite good. Also, because the angle of attack that Goblins is using is it's flooding the board with a lot of creatures. It's it's got 35 creatures in the main deck. It's also got Mog War Marshal, and we just had uh, the this new card that came out in MM the Masters 25. Uh, I think it's, uh, I forget what the name of it is, but it's Red Red Colorless, create three 1-1 one, one Goblin tokens, which three mana for a deck that's running 18 land is it's a little tricky as far as making that balance out and fit, but a couple of copies might also make their way into this kind of a list. Uh, this particular list is running Flame Slash, uh, which may be a nod to the Spire Golems that are floating around out there, and also uh, a nod to Affinity uh, and these kinds of things, but I don't know. You've got you've got other options you can include here. Uh, you could have a, a Death Spark or two of the main. You could load out with a, f a full four four copies of Sparksmith. You could uh, put some of the that new card I was just talking about. It's red red colorless. All right. Well, I guess I guess I might as well find it here really quickly. Let's see here. So let's just navigate. We're gonna go to uh, Masters 25, and let's see if we can organize by common. Here we go. Is it yeah? Hordling outburst. So it's a sorcery. It's really cheap. This is two cents right now online. So cost is not going to be an issue. And red red colors create three one one red goblin creature tokens. So anyway, the original point was red has the ability to really flood the board. Even just something like Mog War Marshal alone, even without Hordling outburst, is extremely problematic for decks that are trying to rely on edict effects like uh, black blue decks. The deck has enough little things you can do to iterate. Pyroblast is also real good against any kind of a Delver base deck. Very good. Pyroblast much better in a deck like Goblins than a deck like Burn in the relevant matchups because in a deck like Burn, Pyroblast may just be swapping out for another Burn spell and hurting your core game plan, whereas 
with goblins, you want to slam some creatures, and then having counter magic as backup allows you to play a tempo game, which is just fine. Uh, Silvok Life Staff here in the sideboard is a nod to burn decks. So here we are. I, you know, we're also talking about the goblins deck here today. The, the only reason I'm talking about it, it's not a significant portion of the metagame. I wouldn't be breaking this down. I'm not going to give a deck like this a full breakdown or a full, a full video all on its own. But I thought it was a nice natural tie-in just to kind of throw a random deck out there that doesn't have an uncrushed, you know, it's, it's not a deck that's always going to beat up on blue-black control, but the kind of game plan that it's trying to execute is actually good against blue-black control because especially if you've got some fire blasts in there in addition to your fire bolts, or if you can work in a little bit more, just a little bit more burn, you can typically... Oh, you know, uh, win this matchup because blue black control has a really hard time with with real with heavy aggression, uh, backed up by burn. One of the things that I forgot to mention that I would I would be remiss uh, if I if I didn't mention is that the goblin's deck is running goblin bushwhacker almost universally. One of the real powerhouses. This this is actually not the goblins list right here, but. Goblin's Wishbacker is a red for a 1-1. One, one. You can pay a kicker to give all your creatures plus 1, plus 0 in haste. And this is just so good. Uh, you can really take strong advantage of this. The more bodies you've got on the board, the better the Bushwhacker is. So really, the the Bushwhacker is better in the Goblin's decks, the, the, the actual real Goblin's decks, than it is in these aggressive red decks. Uh, because typically, if you go with a concentrated red deck with Mog War Marshal, and then you also maybe splash a couple of copies, maybe of Hordling Outburst, you know, if you get a, if you have just a Mog War Marshal and a Hordling Outburst, and that's it, it you know, even if you drop a, Wog, a Mog War Marshal, like let's say this is actually in the mid game somewhere, so uh, you've got three lands out, you play your Hordling Outburst, and then the next turn you play Mog War Marshal, and you hit your fourth land. And then you bat, and then you follow that up with a goblin bushwhacker. So you've actually got five creatures in play just from Mar Mog War Marshal and the Hordling Outburst, and then you have a sixth creature in the form of the goblin bushwhacker, and you're attacking for 12 points of damage off three cards, which is really not bad. Uh, that's it's pretty good, and it's really hard for your opponent to deal with if they don't have some kind of a sweeper. The other nice thing about something like goblins is, if they're playing something like a crypt rat. You, you know, that's going to deal damage to them as well. You can utilize your Mog Raider to never get completely blown out by sacrificing goblins to beef up other goblins, or at least force them to crypt for more damage. Um, and the same thing goes for a couple of the different black sweepers that are out there also do damage to the, the controller. So if you're able to get in a little bit of aggression, utilize your Mog Raider and your Goblin Slider to pump up your goblins a little bit, and then if you actually have that burn to finish, uh, you know, I, I like having at least one copy of Fire Blast, which is a six-costed spell that you can actually sacrifice two mountains as an alternative casting cost to deal four damage to target creature or player. I always want to have at least one copy. I feel like one copy is never too greedy. So, I mean, at a bare minimum, alterations I would make here is dropping at least one Flame Slash for a Fire Blast. And uh, also, I think you might be able to accomplish the same thing that Fire Blast tried to do maybe uh, just by using mutagenic growths because you can smash through and blow up uh, enough of the time you know you'll be able to use those and they're good aggressively I mean flame slash may be okay here but uh, maybe dropping uh, these and adding in a little more burn and some uh, hoarding outbursts I think spark smith is really good right now so I'd want to have four copies of the main I would want to have uh, three electricries in the side and it would be nice to have a Death Spark in the main, one or two of those in the main, and a couple on the sideboard. This would allow you to really maximize your matchups against uh, fairy type decks. Uh, elves are also something else to be able to just hit things for a damage is really good. Uh, now, when you go up against elves, of course, they're going to sideboard in the enchantment that gives all the creatures plus O plus one, so you have to keep that in mind. But, uh, you know, if you want to, you could also consider the option of having Martyr of Ash, which is a sweeper that can take out creatures no matter what size they are. You know, you might actually keep that in mind that it's going to kill your creatures as well, though. So that, that puts you in a weird situation. But, uh, yeah, um, I think this is a deck that's actually reasonably positioned right now. I wanted to throw it out there sort of just as a, you know, a, a, a the other side of the coin to blue-black control. So 
I think you the problem, you know, Koldotha Boros is is going to really shred goblins. This is, this is not again Koldotha Boros is a deck that doesn't really have a you know just a hideously bad matchup situation against very many decks out there. Period. Uh, I think. Boggles might be the closest thing to a problematic deck for this because, you know, this deck has... Uh, it's got one electricery in the main. I mean, it's got a whole whopping one answer in the main deck. And then when you when you come back from there, it's it's got the... Uh, you know, this list is running one standard bear. I mean, you can see this sideboard has evolved to kind of disrespect Boggles because Boggles has drifted so far down in the meta. But, you know, things like Boggles, uh, the problem again with Boggles, it's hard to recommend Boggles right now when blue-black control is this high up in the rankings. It's just it's not going to work out well. But, uh, you know, I think Red Deck is reasonably positioned. Not not a very good matchup against Cold Off the Boros, but if you build it correctly, you can have a reasonable matchup against I Is It Delver by having specific hate pinpoint hate cards in the list there, uh, being able to, to take advantage of... Uh, you know the the recurring uh, removal that you can use, and being aggressive enough to and having enough random creatures to make the sack removal not very efficient from blue black control, and also being aggressive and fast enough to really stick it to Tron. And if you go up against Mono Blue Delver, it's you're going to have an even better matchup against Mono Blue Delver than Is It Delver. Uh, most of the time, just because if if they don't have even the main deck bolts and screds, your aggression is going to be even more potent and powerful. You could have a good game against elves. You could actually do what Burn's trying to do and do it a little bit better and faster if you hit your land drops. Uh, and against Stompy, it's just, just kind of one of those toss-up situations where Stompy has is just such a good value... Uh, as far as its creatures or what it's trying to execute, that it might give you a little bit of trouble. <laughs> Having all the pinpoint removal could actually give something like Inside Out Combo fits, especially if you can present a fast clock while also having some removal. So they simultaneously have to get their combo off quickly, but they also have to be able to uh, have enough counter spells to keep you from terminating their combo by killing the, the tribe. So uh, Mono White Heroic is going to be a matchup that's going to be problematic for you. This is a deck that's fallen back in the metagame. Uh, I don't think it's any accident that Blue Black Control has ascended and Mono White Heroic has fallen off. Mono White Heroic was real popular and I think Blue Black Control was really feeding and benefiting from that by getting so much value out of its sacrifice effects. This is Mono White Heroic deck is going to can certainly give Goblins some real fits just because it it pushes back on all the all the right angles by having creatures with really nice sized bodies that grow and get bigger. The Lagoda Man Trailblazer is real good. The Deathblade Elite is able to get pumped up, get big enough, and start eating goblins all by itself. It's just the, the life gain that this deck has available in the form of Seeker of the Way, uh, as well as having uh, Sacred Cats on the sideboard and the recursion of Sacred Cat. I mean, this deck just fights back on all the right angles to, uh, to push back on a deck like Goblins. So. Anyway, this, this is food for thought. Uh, I guess officially this is a deck review of Blue Black Control and Goblins. Um, and I don't know what we're going to cover next time. Uh, we've, we've, we've talked about a lot of different things. So if you have a particular deck you want me to break down, uh, let me know. Uh, or if you, if you maybe want some other subject or topic within the metagame uh, to be discussed then let me know. But yeah, for today, that's that's blue-black control in a, in a nutshell, uh, as well as uh, goblins and where they both stand in the metagame and where the metagame's at as a whole right now. Uh, blue-black control is not a bad list to take out there. I will say this. One thing I have to mention about blue-black control, another, reason, another thing that would be really problematic is you've got like these different varying degrees of, of what these decks are trying to do. If you're a very controllish type list, then... Uh, your opponent can drop the, the curse on you that mills you in a control -y matchup. And uh, let's see if I can find. There's a, there's actually a blue-green mill deck. I don't know. Oh, here we go. This is, this is, <laughs> this is, this is it. Uh, oh, man, we don't actually have... I, you know, I was thinking they might actually have the, the, the card I was thinking of. But I guess, I guess they don't really need it... Uh, but anyway, there's a there's an enchantment curse that's a blue and two colorless, and it mills your opponent 
or the person that's cursed for two cards during their upkeep every turn. And that's a card that can be a real beating. So if you're a deck that is having trouble against blue-black heavy controlish type lists, or really any other type of controlish list, and you want to be able to win that control and control matchup, that's a card that could, could certainly be an Achilles heel uh, for for the those lists. Also, a deck like this blue-green mill deck, uh, if you're just if you're just really annoyed with blue-black decks. This is a deck that, uh, because because a lot of these blue black lists are kind of incentivized to run counter spell light, you if you it's it's a tricky matchup because you if you get in a position where you're dead to any attack and you're having to tap out to play your fog effects and they counter spell one and they kill you, yeah, you're gonna lose. But if you can start fogging early enough and, and don't let your life total dwindle that far, where you can absorb a few counter spells on your fogs and still battle through that. This is a list that could definitely give these slow blue-black control lists fits, especially if they're light on threats. Uh, same thing, uh, really, for for any kind of control list that's light on threats. If you just want to troll some of those kind of decks or troll some of these uh, heavy all-in uh, lists that are just they're just going total aggression and they don't have any way to interact with perpetual fogs, so you can punish them. The problem with a list like blue-green is that uh, it it really folds to something like is it Delver that can apply tempo e pressure and also have counter spells and card advantage and things like this that it can that it can employ like mono blue and is it Delver are two of two really strong ever ever present decks in this format right now um, so you know and, and a lot of times uh, Tron uh, has a reasonable chance to get around all your dirtling as well but it, it's if you if you enjoy just torturing blue black control and, and Tron lists by you know making things like the clock management matter and stuff like that um, and you want to just be able to give grief to stompy lists and stuff like that and mono white heroic then you know a random shout out to the blue green mill deck it, it's it's an absolutely trollish deck so i wouldn't want to talk about it anymore than just as a random throw in here at the end after most of you aren't paying attention anymore uh but uh it's it's also an option and, and I guess I should mention really quickly, since I'm never going to cover this deck again, hopefully, it wins off the back of Jace's Erasure, which mills your opponent for one every time you draw a card. So you get a couple of copies of these out, and pop a Brainstorm, boom, you just milled your opponent for six cards. And it plays Fog and other Fog Effects, moment piece, Moments Peace, Respite, Tangle, does a lot of this kind of stuff. And it just basically just Fogs, draws cards, counterspells things, and mills your opponent to death. It's pretty straightforward. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any special requests for any subjects you want covered, just leave a comment in this or any other video, and I'll get right on it. Peace!